You won't be paying your monthly insurance and your car payments and you don't have to pay for parking. Owning a car could be pretty damn expensive, especially when you live in a metropolitan where everything is right at your doorstep. But what if I told you there's a way you can avoid paying all those monthly car expenses and still be able to drive whenever you want and wherever you want at an extremely affordable price? I recently decided to sign up for Commune Auto, which is a Canadian car sharing company that allows you to rent cars for spontaneous as well as planned trips. And the best part, you can literally drive these cars anywhere. So in this video, we We'll be testing out and reviewing this car sharing program in detail so you can decide whether if it's finally time for you to say goodbye to your dear car. Alright guys, so now I'm gonna open up the Commune Auto app and show you guys how easy it is to find vehicles through it and how the whole process basically works. And you can see on the map that there's all these different markers, green markers and the orange markers that you see right here. Green marker is a flex vehicle and the orange marker is a round trip vehicle. So a flex vehicle, you can pick it up from the point that's marked on the map and you can drop it off anywhere within the flex zone and you don't have to worry about bringing it back. Flex vehicles, you can only book them up to 30 minutes in advance. So they are good for like short trips. Usually. When you're like traveling within the city let's say if i'm going to the gym and i just don't feel like walking with round trip vehicles however they have to be booked in advance you could book them up to like 30 days in advance if you want the only thing with that is you have to bring it back to wherever you picked it up from now the way the pricing of this thing works is they have different levels of membership most basic one is called the open plan and that's the one i am on and you don't have to pay anything monthly for that if you're renting a flex vehicle it charges you around 40 or 41 cents per minute and it goes up to 12 dollars an hour $50 per day. Um, it's the same for round trip vehicles as well. So depending on your usage, you can also opt in for a different level of membership for which you would be paying like a monthly fee. The higher your plan is, the lower your hourly or your per minute cost of renting a vehicle would be. Flex vehicles actually come equipped with like a parking pass. You're pretty much allowed to park anywhere within the city as long as you're not like violating any of the obvious parking signs where it says no parking or no stopping. You're still not allowed to park there. All right, so now I'm going to jump into the app and we're gonna try to locate a flex vehicle today I was thinking maybe we can go to Dartmouth because I feel like I haven't really done any videos on Dartmouth there's one right here which I think is the closest one and that's like 770 meters away but I can simply just go ahead and block that vehicle so it basically gives you 30 minutes to get to the vehicle and till then it's gonna hold this car for you so nobody else can book it we have 29 minutes now no time to waste so let's go Flex vehicles aren't really ideal for situations when you know you're gonna need a vehicle on a certain day at a certain time. So if I was in a rush right now, this wouldn't have worked out because this is like still 700 meters away. So it's quite a walk. So if I had to like be somewhere on time, it's usually best to just book a round trip vehicle in advance. That way you know exactly where it's going to be and you can prepare yourself accordingly. All right guys, so still with about 14 minutes to spare, I have made it to my vehicle. So once you are near the vehicle, you just quick simply go in and like press unlock and it will ask you if you're ready to start your trip because once you hit unlock, that's when the, your billable hours basically start. So I'm gonna hit let's go. I heard the clicking sound, that means the car is unlocked. And let me get settled real quick. Whew, it is hot in here, like really hot in here. Not sure if you can tell by the sweat on my forehead but anyway so once you're in the car we're gonna open the dashboard and in the dashboard you can see there's a credit card there so the credit card is basically in case if you have to stop to fuel up the gas so one other thing about the service is that everything with it is included you don't have to pay for gas you don't have to pay for insurance yes it charges you like an additional dollar per ride um, but that basically covers you in case if you get in an accident for your car keys you'll see your car keys are actually attached to a little USB port in the dashboard so you just unplug it it's got like that you know when you get into a new car it has that like really nice smell it has a sunroof I'm gonna keep that open because it's really hot but you can see what the car looks like from behind overall not bad guys now let's take this bad boy for a little spin So technically, Dartmouth is considered a different city than Halifax, which is why I wasn't sure if I'd be able to drop off a flex vehicle picked up from Halifax. So I decided to call the customer service. 
Hi there, I just had a quick question. I just picked up a flex vehicle from Halifax and I was gonna drive it to Dartmouth and I was wondering if I'm able to also drop it off in Dartmouth, like end my trip there. Uh, yes, we have a partial flex zone uh, over on the Dartmouth side. Uh, I just recommend taking a look at uh, your app to see what the drop-off points are. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty small, but you can see like by drop off point, you mean like the flex zone, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome, perfect. That's all. See, didn't even have to pay at the bridge. That is honestly so convenient, guys. Because one of the things that I find so annoying every time I have to cross the bridge is like having to have a dollar on me, and I literally never ever carry like any change or any kind of cash on me. There's so many times I've embarrassed myself when I've literally just like driven to the bridge, and then once I'd get there, I'd realize that I don't have any change or a dollar to pay for it, and you know, it would just be an embarrassing situation. I'd have to like talk to the guy who was sitting at the gate and be like, hey, like I'm so sorry, I forgot to carry a dollar, and then they would just like, you know, they would not be happy, but they would just let me in for free. But that's does not always work, so do not try that. I'm not suggesting you try that. So I was actually able to find a parking spot right here in downtown Dartmouth, which is for, it's a designated spot for car share parking only. So I'm gonna leave my car over here. Um, and I just quickly wanna show you guys how to actually end the trip. All you're gonna do is you're gonna open the dashboard and you're gonna make sure you insert that. That's not a USB, I don't know what this is, but you're gonna put this back right where you got it from and that's it. You close the dashboard and we're gonna go back into the app. So you can see I've been driving for 42 minutes and my first 30 minutes were free, so I would still be billed for the remainder, the extra 12 minutes I used the car for. Okay. So that was a fun little trip guys, but I had a little bit of issues towards the end when I was trying to end the trip. Um, I was able to end the trip, but for some reason after I got out of the car, it just wouldn't lock. Because as soon as I hit the end tray button, the car automatically locked, but because I was in there, I had to unlock it to get out, and after getting out, I just wasn't able to lock it back. So I had to call like the customer service, and I was on hold for like almost like 10, 15 minutes. So I like stood around the car, and then they were like able to remotely lock the car. So yeah, it all worked out. We're in Dartmouth now. I think out of the like four years that I've lived here, this is probably like the second or third time I've just like come out to Dartmouth by myself. Today we're gonna be doing a little bit of exploring, but before we do any of that, you guys know the drill. We're gonna go find a coffee shop and get a coffee. Five dollars for iced coffee, not the cheapest, but that's what you get in Dartmouth. Thank you very much, you as well. So other than the super expensive iced coffee I just bought, I have to say guys, Dartmouth so far has completely exceeded my expectations. I feel like I've been taking Dartmouth for granted living in Halifax, I would just never come out here often. Coffee and I've got a beautiful view of downtown Halifax like behind me you can see the waterfront that just puts me in a really good mood but that being said since this video is still about commune auto I want to talk about the sign up process because I think that's important so the sign up process overall I would say it was pretty easy but it took a few days it's not as simple as signing up and you're ready to go boom boom pow that's not how it works unfortunately so the whole process really took me around eight to 10 days, but that's mainly because I did screw up my application a little bit. Normally, I think it takes only around like four to five business days. The way it works is you go to Commune Auto's website, you have to like sign up, select your city, and you like fill out an application form. They do a credit check on you. So you don't really have to pay for the sign up, but you do have to submit a driver's record because they want to make sure you don't have like any like crazy accidents or you know any crazy stuff on your driving record. And in order for you to obtain that, there's two ways you can do it you can either do it yourself and it costs 1875 or you can do it directly through commune auto and there's a 
you do have to pay a bit of an additional fee for that so instead of $18.75 you'd be paying $20 but what that does is it takes like the headache away from you you're not the one worrying about you know obtaining the record and submitting it to them and just makes the process go by a little bit faster the only thing where I screwed up was so when you're signing up you have to like submit a picture of your driver's license and then you also have to submit a picture of you holding your driver's license like and in the frame when you're taking the picture your arm and like your hand your face everything has to be like fully visible in the frame and that's where I screwed up so when I was taking the picture I think my arm was like not entirely in the frame it was sort of like getting cut off after I sent my application four days later I got an email saying that they, they didn't reject my application but they just asked me to like submit another photo but of me like holding the driver's license properly it took them like another four to five days to process that so overall it was like around 10 days but yeah the second time it got accepted and then I got an email saying that I should be ready to use the service Personally guys, I think this is a very good alternative for someone who's like living in like downtown and you don't really like feel the need to like own a car. So this is a really good way and like, you know, if you're someone who every once in a while needs to like drive somewhere and you just don't want to pay for insurance. So you could always just sign up for this service so that way you won't be paying, you know, like your monthly insurance and your car payments and you don't have to pay for parking. But every once in a while, if you still need a car, you can easily just go into this app, get a car, go wherever you want and pay like a little fee. So I think it's definitely worth it especially for people living in like the downtown areas um, and that's really what I am doing too because I recently actually just sold my car because my car payments as I've covered in like one of my older videos like my car payments were like insanely high I was paying like well over $500 a month just in my insurance my car payments parking and everything is kind of crazy and also because next month I'm actually gonna be traveling for like a couple of months I'm not gonna tell you where I'm going yet I'm going to a different country I also didn't want to end up like being stuck with like making like these hefty car payments while I'm like not even driving my car so yeah so I ended up selling it like a couple weeks ago which is also why I signed up for the service and so far it's been great so far it's been amazing and I am you know again like I don't really drive to a lot of places because I live in downtown Halifax most places that I'm trying to get to I can just walk there but it's just a good option to have every once in a while you know when I need to go somewhere far sometimes I have shoots that I need to go on which are like outside of the city so that's when I use this service. Always, always on the run. Head up in the clouds. I can be perfect, perfect for one night. When tomorrow comes, you know I'll be gone. So I've just made it back to Halifax, guys. I didn't really take the car back home yet because I have a couple of errands to run in downtown. So I just parked it right here. It's a car share parking only and i still have around 10 minutes to spare so basically the first 30 minutes are free and i'm only like 20 minutes into the ride so i didn't even have to pay anything for this ride which is really cool so i'm gonna end this trip right here and yeah we are good to go the car just locked itself and yeah guys so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm gonna end it right here um, if you guys have any questions, as always, leave those in the comments below and I will get back to you guys as soon as I can. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next week. Peace.